welcome, man. Thank you it's for great. inviting me. Of course, it's great to see you. I'm very happy to have you on here and uh, <laughs> to talk about your uh, your illustrious uh, career. You've been down and doing this for a very, very long time, and so we are we're hyped and excited to talk about it. So let's get into it a little bit. Um, I'm going to be showing images of your work uh, to sort of guide the conversation. So for those of you who don't know, this is uh, Sekis uh, Nelson Rivas, who is a writer and a fine artist from Santiago, Chile, who has been active since the early 90s at the very beginning of this art movement in Chile. And, and so he's been doing this for quite a long time. Uh, he now lives and works in New York, uh, but continues to travel and create works around the world. And so let's get into it. So, so Nelson, can you tell us uh, just how you discovered this art movement? Um, well, yeah, I'm from Santiago, which is a big city. Um, and during the 80s, we got this uh, exposure of hip to hip hop um, uh, uh, through the theaters, you know, the movies, the the, the famous movies in the 80s, the Beat Street and Breaking. So that's how kind of hip hop kind of started in, in Chile. And that's kind of the beginning for, for the movement over there. Um, I was, um, uh, it also, there's another uh, factor that we had like a, like a pol political graffiti uh, movement over there in the 70s and in the 80s that people were like uh, painting against uh, Pinochet and, and they were getting organized and, and doing like kind of similar how we do it in graffiti, like creating groups and uh, crews and, and going at night and, and painting and, have, and, and taking as a, as a mission, you know? Sure. So, so all that kind of resonated in me in a way, because I, I, there was a lot of uh, uh, graffiti on the street, like political stuff and murals too. But everything was done like illegally at night. So you kind of uh, ran into it, like graffiti in a way, because you, you were going on, a, on in the car of your, on, with your pops and, and you were looking new paintings that were appearing, you know? So that was uh, important in my life. But then when, when graffiti started, it was, uh, uh, when graffiti kind of hit was uh, like late uh, late eighties early nineties and that's when when I kind of started because I, I I saw all the people doing it on the street like I didn't see them doing it but I saw the new like uh, hand styles and and stuff that I've never seen it before I was so used to like graffiti like political stuff so uh, when when I started looking at like these writings like uh, I could recognized this was like like New York graffiti, you know, and it was it was uh, it was already happening in the city. So I was like 15, 14 and and I got drawn by it. So uh, I start I knew about graffiti because Beat Street in the 80s, but I never started until like early 90s. You know? so and so and so when you started, what, did you start, you know, immediately painting in the street or, or were you practicing yeah. like, yeah? Yeah, well, no, in the beginning, uh, when I was still at school with my friend, one of my, like, my best friend, who's also, like, an, an artist and is uh, whom I started with, you know, writing with, uh, beside. Um, we started, like, drawing graffiti on our notebooks in at school and, and doing graffiti with, like, chalk on, on, the, on the walls of school, you know. But it was super basic. It was based of what we remember from from the Beat Street movie that wasn't totally like a Hollywood version of graffiti. So it was uh, from the beginning we we didn't have like a foundation, but we we started when we start painting, we started right away on the street and we started doing it at night. So we had to get organized. We have to get all the paint and during the week and uh, we start creating a group also. So that's how kind of we started. Uh, and so, and so, what you know? Where was your family? Like, how did how did that? How did your family deal with the fact that you wanted to start going out and doing? They hated. <laughs> they they didn't like it till till now till today. You know, it's graffiti is something bad. So for them, so, but for us it was like uh, the new the new thing. You know, it was something that was so fresh and so energetic, and 
and and kind of engaging for for us. So that's where we like uh, fall for it. You know, like I, and also I I think I got lucky because in my neighborhood there were like uh, people that move in and and that were writing. So I kind of that gave me more like uh, energy to start it. So I started writing with friends in my neighborhood. We start writing out. We also like started walking on like the this the the city in a way, like trying to write as much as we can where and uh, all the places. Um, and then from then on, we start like evolving our, our styles and, and doing bigger stuff and and more elaborate, elaborated. But we didn't have too much information, so uh, the first paintings are like super. I don't know, like uh, like you could. See, it was like a like early seventies New York kind of. You have to like uh, make up uh, from whatever you have and, and create something that was your name. Your, you create your name and then you start painting it. And how dangerous was it to, to paint in the street at night? Was it safe? Because, you know, the, it wasn't a dictatorship anymore. Uh, was it? Yeah, it, it was. It was. It, it was scary. You know, um, it wasn't like the 80s anymore. So we were kind of in the safe zone, even though if we would have got we got caught we could have uh, have like really bad bad time in the early 90s but uh that didn't happen until later so and then the the, the whole country after 1919 1990 changed because pinochet is finished and we come with another system democratic supposed to be um and a lot of people start on uh, people from europe and from from other parts that were in exile, they came back with their kids, and the kids brought a lot of uh, information. So um, that was that was it, kind of. That was all, all the info we had. So, so when did you start piecing? Because I see here, you know, so these images are images that you shared with us. When when did uh, you start was, doing this stuff? Yeah, that's like '94, and we're like um, influenced by the Source magazines, the the page uh, the with graffiti. Because we got to get this uh, this this page, so we kind of copy it, and and then we also got uh, the getting getting up book, which was very transcendental to understand the the game of graffiti and and how things works and and the laws and and all the politics that are involved. Uh, that kind of we since we got that book it was like okay now we know what we have to do you know or like how this works so. Um, this like this does well. Th that one is from 1997. So, the the letters were already evolved. We had a lot of uh, influence by Europe in the 90s um, uh, because the, the the evolution over there were, were was incredible, and 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 and, and a lot of images uh, start coming from there, like magazines. So we also got uh, this influence from, 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 from the magazine, from graffiti magazine from Europe. And we tried to create our own, own, own style when, when we met those gemios uh, and they came like in like 96. So that was another like a uh, break uh, through of uh, our history because that's how we started like getting more into the art side like more like uh, more like i don't know it's our side but it's an it's more like a complex way because it's not like you have to copy what they were doing there you know like or what what was happening in, in paris or in berlin we were trying to when we saw gemios came that they changed the, the our mentality you know like we have to create our own way and we have to try to bring our own style and and work on that so so and so and so, how did that connection happening? What what made those guys come over to uh, to Santiago? Yeah, uh, through the hip hop movement over there, we had like a graffiti festival organized by by the old school people, like the b boy. They were very into like uh, graffiti, and also one of them were uh, had this connection with Brazil, so he was traveling there, and then. Um, he brought them. He, he they they created this big event, the International Graffiti Jam, and people from Brazil, like a big crew of Brazilians, people from from Argentina too, um, came and we started like the the connection. That's how how kind of that was in 1996. 
how how uh, big was was the movement back then? You know, was, within was, hip hop, was was big. Like nineties is uh, is is the golden era for us. You know, like it's how everything became kind of big and 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 like uh, popular, like a popular culture in in the in the in the city. You know, like when when we started graffiti, like like ninety two, ninety three. In '96, was the city was very bomb. Like so, in two years, it kind of exploded, and then uh, kind of everything started from there. So here in in this uh, photo that we have here, it's one of your pieces with those Gemios pieces. Oh yeah. And so this is, this is this is what you're talking about, right? This collaboration. Yeah, that's a collaboration I did in Sao Paulo with them. I was invited for. Uh, to the launch of the first graffiti magazine in, in South America. It's called Fist Graffiti Attack, which was made by those Jamios. So I, came, I went for the, for, the, for the party. It was a, a hip hop party in Incredible. And I stayed longer there and then we, paint, we painted the, few, the next days. We did some bombing and, and some piecing too. Incredible. And how was your experience going to Sao Paulo to this jam? Were you able to connect with even more people? It was like we were going to New York in a way because it was uh, in another level, you know, because it was like it's bigger and they were doing it for a longer time. And so and, and, and the, the culture was, was so rich, you know, like people culture was incredible. Like like you like I was feeling like I was in in Beat Street, you know, <laughs> and when they were like at the Roxy, you know. Right. So did you also <laughs> participate? You know, as what, did you get into into the dance culture as well? Did you be boy? Well, I try. I, I like to dance anything. So I'm I'm, I'm I, I always wanted to be boy. I, in the in the when I was a kid, in my neighborhood because breaking came before you know because in the mid mid 80s with uh you know don francisco and sao gigante is also part of the hip-hop history because they they brought uh, uh bob master fable and mr wiggles with two other with different names and and he was bringing he brought them to santiago for because sao gigante started in chile so uh, that that was a big uh thing for 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 the hip-hop community um so, so, so that's pretty amazing. So for, yeah. for everybody who doesn't know, Sábado Gigante is a tremendous uh, television show that was on weekly. Uh, I, it might even still be on the air now. I don't know. But it's, it was a very, very long running show on for, for decades, at least at least 20 or 30 years. No, it's it's like 50 now. years. Or 50 years. <laughs> and so... Uh, you know, they had a lot of music acts, a lot of dance acts coming every single week, and, and they introduced a lot of people to Latin America. Yeah. And so it's amazing that Don Francisco was able to bring <laughs> these dancers to, yeah. to Chile. Yeah. It's, it's totally it. incredible, but it's a very influential show because it opened, you know. Yeah, like, uh, like kids, like every Saturday, we're waiting for like this 15 minute section of Sao Gigante where there was. This guy popping and locking and trying to, uh, to teach you in a way, you know? Uh, <laughs> Incredible. So that, that was our roots in a way. Like, uh, that's why hip hop uh, over there is big, you know? It's, it's everywhere in a way. It's, it's incredible. It's incredible how much media uh, had an influence and what exactly made it. So, Beat Street Breaking, Saudo Gigante, and then, of course, the jams. I love hearing the story about the jam being organized by uh, members of the hip hop community to to bring folks together because it was happening in Europe and to hear that it was happening in Chile and that you guys were connecting in Chile and Brazil is is wonderful and it shows sort of this D DIY uh, attitude that we all have yeah. in this movement. And so th this piece was mm -hmm. a pretty uh, spectacular piece and your mm -hmm. character here is a hundred percent a b boy. Yeah, that's the influence. So, the beginning is for me, you know, like Motu, uh, Motu basically, and the other people too. But like, he kind of brought that the new style of uh, of uh, painting and, and and drawing, and I think it influenced the whole world. So um, yeah, I was as quickly I start like developing my style into more like characters, uh, the letters. I kind of left it, but 
I always keep doing it, but I was more into bombing, more like, uh, or if I do a piece, it was going to be more simple way. I don't know. Uh, but, but I start focusing a lot of creating uh, characters and the situations, you know, within like uh, a big production so other people could focus on, on, on letters and, and sometimes I do letters and characters. But, um, but yeah, it started more, more like if I was going to do a, like a production or like a legal wall, I was more um, about to bring, a, you know, like a character and, 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 and say something in a way. I think that's the mural uh, thing that is, is in me, you know, from, from, from back, from the old, old, old murals. And, sure. um, and we start creating like mixing. We start like kind of creating this mix of, of influences like... Uh, graffiti influence uh, from Europe, from, from the States, from Brazil, and also start uh, re like discovering our own, own, own roots, you know? So, so that's how like, even though we were not using the same like imagery and, and, and elements where we're doing kind of the same way, thing in a way, you know, we're mixing a mural art with, with graffiti. Sure. I mean, but, but the style is good. The style is original. Yeah, the style was influenced also by Europe. I have a, one, of my fa one of my favorite writers is from England, you know, and, 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 and that he influenced me a lot. He probably, he don't know me, probably, but uh, I was uh, trying to, to not copy it, but get in, you know, like to that kind of style, you know, so... It does remind me of that chunky uh, British style, that chunky yeah. London style of those of those whole cars that those guys are doing. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I remember that very well. It's like opac or, you know. Yeah, the graffiti, the Parisian too. We, yeah. One of my my one of my crew members, my friend, who also like is a mentor for me, sick, sick one. He grew up in Paris in the in the eighties, so he brought all this like hand style. Our, our hand style in Chile are very like uh, influenced by 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 Paris and Berlin because there were two kids were from from those areas who came to Chile and start writing. So those were kind of the first writers in Chile, and that's how like we got influenced too. You know, like, amazing, T truly truly global. Yeah, man, we are kind of the the consequence of uh, everything of like Cold War and and globalization. And, and 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 the history of all Latin America, we were kind of relate related to each other because we had similar political process. So and we are a mix of uh, European, uh, Native American, South American, or and 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 African. So so uh, that's that's uh, we we share a lot of things within the the Latin American community or countries, you know. Yes, yes. I mean, I love like here. You, you, you write who got the flow, and so it just shows yeah. like what you're thinking. You're, you're in a, a hip hop mindset. Yeah, the, the black moon stuff. Exact, exactly. <laughs> and then you know this image, you know, showing off like you were saying before, you painting other things other than, uh, than letters. Yeah. Well, that's right? this. Uh, I have a. Uh, I, uh, I think it was like ninety, ninety-eight, ninety-nine. There was a short time that I did like some like portrait, like a real realistic style. I think I did it more mostly to to see if I could do it. But then uh, quickly I, I I never did it again. I think I did a couple pieces, and this is uh yeah what well, this is like a dedicated to Bob Marley, and and I had a a piece next to it but it's covered with the people. Yeah. Well. It's, then it's, the it's, next it's, two, the next is Derek. That is another friend from my crew he's another like pioneer in, in chile before before me he was a b-boy he's pro he's one of the b-boy old school b-boy who 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 became a, a graffiti artist and 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 he dedicated 100 percent to graffiti and art after you know i love that so so just so everybody knows uh this is nelson rivas aka Sekis. We are talking about the origins of graffiti uh, in Chile, in Santiago, and his own origins and what 
and how things came to be in the city. And it's a fascinating story of the immersion of hip hop uh, in South America and how everybody connected from Brazil to Argentina to Chile um, and and the beginnings. And it's it's great to hear it and to learn about this. And so in your work, Nelson, I see what you're talking about here. You're experimenting with your letter styles yeah. and then you're dropping these characters and these characters are heavily influenced by hip hop. Yes, of course. That's why we, what we did, you know, like that's only what we, that's all what we did in, in my neighborhood. It was all full of hip hoppers and like people that were like, it became like a, like a, also like a center for, for, for underground in a way, or like a not center, but like a school in a way. For my friends, they were rapping and uh, and, and doing stuff in the, in the neighborhood. So, yeah, we were very influenced by hip hop in New York, you know, in that way, you know. And I love it. And here you're experimenting. You're 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 you know doing these paintings with uh, two colors, very economical. Yeah, that's I, I think is basically the influence from from Osgemias, You know, those are the years where I, that they came, and after, we after start like looking for create our own style and also use like materials that we were not like um, familiar with. Like we kind of saw the people's of these uh, Brazilians that came and start like rolling, doing like backgrounds with 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 paint with uh, latex and. And, and and also bombing at daytime. So all those are like things that we kind of started to discover like when, after these people came and and we kind of uh, learned that we could paint uh, illegally daytime too, you know, like, and that led to the new, the next generation that they uh, took over, you know, they, the ice lab, the, so many explore uh, so many other crews that they were like painting on the daily basis and with anything they can find you know so and they're doing big big pieces big block letters and uh, we're gonna show them we're gonna show yeah. those guys pieces i love those guys and so i wanted to i just show i wanted to show this so that people understood that there was you know even you know in in production and records and stuff there was a connection between writers and the rappers and the b-boys it was all together like yes. new york in in the 80s and, yes. and before you know and so here you see tiro de gracia mm -hmm. uh one of uh the rap groups from chile from yeah, the 90s one, all of them had like hand styles you know like that that was the culture like one of them was super good like tagging and the other probably also had like a nice hand style you know so uh, that was we, we that's how it was, you know. That's how it was, and so mm -hmm. here, here you see now another collaboration production between you, uh, I think Stowhead, uh, Osgemios, and and others. Can Pops. you tell us about this? Pops. Yeah, there was a trip. The first trip I I did to Europe, two thousand one or two. Um, we went for for actually we went. We did like a like a. How do you call it? The, the TV shows that are like a real life shit. Um, oh yeah, a reality. And a reality, shows. but it, before that, we're called reality. We went with a, uh, with a, with the TV crew and a group of uh, b boys and and a rap group from Santiago. We were invited to go to Europe, and they invited me as a graffiti artist in a way. So, uh, and then so I was in Europe, and those gems were already. Uh, ex exhibiting in, in in different er places and and that uh, happened in in Hamburg for the uh, how there was this event uh, very important exhibition from graffiti um, that Dame and all the big names from there so I, I traveled to Hamburg to meet those gemios and and spend time with them and and we paint some murals with Lumit and and other German dudes. Um, this was like a, a like a Hall of Fame place that everybody can go and paint. And how was that? I did so the, the background. I created the, the idea of uh, looking from the sewer, and then they well, the idea was kind of like we talk about the idea, but um, 
I had this sketch probably in my black book and I was going to say, okay, let's do this and we can add that and that, that, that's how it worked. Very cool. So yeah. how was your, how was your experience, you know, going from Chile uh, to, to Germany, to Hamburg and painting with these guys? Uh, was, was kind of chalking in a way, but because the, 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 they have more, there, there's so much, uh, everything, you know, materials and information. They've been, they've been doing it forever too. So we, I was like, uh, you know, amazed, amazed by, and, and, and grateful that Ozienos invited me to, to hang out and be with them and, 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 and kind of paint with all these other people, you know? Um, but it was, uh, uh, by that time I was also like, I've been like, doing i was doing it for like i don't know eight years or uh, so I, I didn't know exactly what i wanted to do i tried to you know like i wanted to paint a train but i never i couldn't <laughs> so uh that didn't happen that was that would be amazing but uh but we did this uh, incredible collaboration and i stayed with i i met a lot of good people you know like great people what about this piece here can you tell me a little bit about this Oh yeah, that's in that's from the same trip. This is another this is in in Holland with Java. Java is a is a is a um, Belgian Belgian artist. Uh, so because the we were with this TV thing, we they they kind of arranged this meeting, and he took us to this place in Holland that was in near to the border with Belgium, and we did some some paintings at, at like a, on the Hall of Fame during the day. I was uh, full into like characters. Uh, I was drawing these styles of like kind of perspective style, and, and yeah, that was it. Um, it's a it's a bit of a change from what you've been painting before. It is, uh, yeah. My story is a lot of change, like changes, because uh, I was uh, influenced by different people, and 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 I don't know. I like to experiment. I like to try out different things, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I did a lot of characters and different styles. That's it's one of I think one of the reasons I I don't do it anymore so often because I did it a lot, and it, it was changing. It was always evolving into a new thing. Sure, I and think then, you uh, know. Yeah. I, I remember receiving a letter from you uh, in the '90s. Yeah, from from Chile that had a drawing uh back then i had a magazine called stress magazine yeah. and you sent me a stress piece with some characters in that perspective which i still have um Amazing. and and stickers you know dve stickers yeah. and those gemio stickers and all kinds of cool stuff and i think we published it in in stress magazine back then and you know what what i noticed back then you know when we received your letter is that you know we learned that there was hip hop culture mm -hmm. in in chile because yeah. that's how we we had to communicate through through letters right and through mm -hmm. writing people that's and so it was it was great to receive it then and then i remember you know shortly after meeting you in person at black august yeah i came in the, uh, that was the second time i came, i went to new york uh, but this time was more like for for longer time and 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 more focus into like hip hop, making connections and painting too. So you were one of the those big connections that led me to meet uh, meet um, Santo. Yeah, yeah, we painted, we painted, we all went to paint together in the Bronx. I remember it quite yeah, well. Later, when I came back, when I moved. Ah, in, that's right. Uh, but then, but but on, when I but. Uh, 99, I met Santo and he took me to paint and that was also was a big experience, you know, because I never painted with a real, you know, New Yorker graffiti legend in a way, you know, and, and, and the way he was, he, he, he does his work and how serious he is for, for everything to check out spots to, he knew everything. So I was like, okay, yeah, I, I didn't, I, I probably didn't say any word. He took me to case two case two house apartment and i couldn't believe it and and i i i, I remember i didn't say no word i couldn't say anything i was so like shy and and, and i knew already case two because uh, beats uh, star wars so i was like come on. <laughs>
That's pretty incredible. Yeah, man. That's pretty incredible. But that's one of the wonderful things about, you know, when you get down with the right crew, when you get down with people that really live and breathe this movement and that have a <clears throat> connection to tradition and to history. So you getting down with Os Gemios and the Brazil um, scene, the Sao Paulo scene, incredible. Mm -hmm. You coming to New York and hooking up with Sao yeah, I'm lucky, man. <laughs> and going to Case Two's house, you know, on Jackson Avenue uh, is wild. And I'm sure you hung out with his mom, right? Probably saw her. We we'll say hi, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> she was always a, she was always around, and with uh, and with Boo. I don't know if you ever met you met Boo, but no, it's it's kind of it's kind of an an amazing uh, experience. And so, but you know, graffiti culture could could give that to you. You could yeah, meet your sure. you could meet your heroes. Yeah. You can meet, uh, you know, the the pioneers even of this movement, Thank if you me. want to. Yeah. If you really, if you want to, you can do it. You yeah. just got to be willing to jump on the train and go to the Bronx. Yeah, man. Right, and go yeah. into the projects, and they're there waiting. Yeah, right. <laughs> Actually, so when, when the first time I went to New York, it was for a weekend, because I was staying in in Virginia. I tried to move into the state before, so I tried to live in Virginia, which was, you know, not the best, and it was like. Winter time, it was terrible. I got lucky. Also had a car, but before I moved, I decided to move back to Chile. With it was said with my friend, okay, we gotta go to New York for the weekend. So interesting. We for the weekend, and and we went straight to the Bronx. We got lucky too because we after we uh, arrived, it was early like Saturday, 5 a.m. And we met this kids from the Bronx, you know, who look like, who look at us and they say, okay, wh wh what are you doing? Who are you? You know, like, because probably we're like super B-boy, uh, we're right. like Kango and shit. And, and, and he, we told them we want to see graffiti, we want to see where's the Bronx and whatever, take, go take pictures. I said, I'm from the Bronx, I'm going to take you. Like uh, he was coming from a party, I don't know, he, he took us for a long walk like from, from 42nd Street to, I don't know, to the West Side Highway where they have graffiti over there. So yes. There, and then to, he took us to the Bronx. So, and then he left us there. And we, we bought some, some blood with them. He was, he was um, like a host, like incredible. We, that's incredible. <laughs> that's why when you know, like New York people is, are, are the best in a way, you know, they have this bad rap, but they're, they are willing to, you know, like help and, and whatever. You know? I love that. That's a great story. So, so I want to get back to to some of these pieces. And so, you here, you see you experimenting. Yeah, uh, with, paint, with la stuff. latex paint, and then just using the spray paint for like maybe the shot, like the the brights, the highlights, or, uh, or yeah, it was also so, influenced by from 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 Brazil, like Biche, uh, Os Gemos. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can see that. I can see that in this piece. I can see that. Mm -hmm. And we, so, we also like, I, I also like that that style, like simple and big and and bold. Uh, I think it's uh, he has a lot of uh, uh, weight, you know. And and when you do it, when you do it like right, uh, it stands out. Like, well, you know, speaking of doing it right and and big styles, I mean, here here is uh, Ice yeah. Lap. Yeah, that's we Ice Lap. That's me. That's me with a character that I was already living in the state. So I'm like, uh, I'm evolving too. I'm like doing this uh, fat characters uh, that I did for, for, for a few years, maybe. Yeah, I, I remember these very well. And, and, and again, you know, economical with paint. Um, yeah. You know, you know, I slap for those of you guys that, that don't know or have never seen their work, um, I slap. Yeah, they are is a uh, pretty incredible artist uh, all around, and and they're really committed to to writing and to the graffiti movement. These pieces, you know, they they uh, are kings of uh, Santiago. Yeah, and uh, and they influence uh, the the next generation. So then then now the big crews over there, which one of uh, one of is Islap's crew too, but there's many others that were like. So like influenced by Islap and by their uh, the amount of work and, and 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 time they put, you know, so much. I, I, sure. 
I was when I was I was uh, I moved here in 2004. Uh, they were like starting it, like they were starting to to get uh, recognized, and 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 after I moved here, they kept doing it bigger and bigger and more, and 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 they had like a huge avenue filled with their pieces, like every block, huge. And sometimes the whole the whole block was a big piece of them. So uh, they created a big. Uh, movement to you know like how how paint how you use uh, materials and and do uh, much with with less do more with less or whatever you big. can find you know You're that's right. the, big the, big giant pieces yeah the survival mode like it's, uh, the south american style yes and so and so you got into muralism heavy living in new york uh, we started yeah. to see lots of your murals around town and in yeah. the United States, and a lot of them, uh, if not all of them, they they involved people. You know, for a while, you know, your work always had people that had a sense of community in it. Yeah. Why, why? Why is that? What What was driving you to tell these stories or to make these paintings? Well. Um... I think, as, as I said before, I had this uh, muralism kind of history, Chilean mural history, and and I grew up, grew up looking at stuff like that, or, or like at me murals that we had a message that were against the the, the police or against the the brutality of the of the military, and so uh, I got that that uh, consciousness like. And also it came from 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 my family too, you know, like how they thought and and what what they did or, or how what we talk in the at dinner and how they told us the story of our country. So um, and there's many things. I think uh, when I when I when I realized that I wanted to paint on the streets forever in a way, I I I kind of start developing like ideas and. And because in the beginning it was more like my name and and, and get around and, and get better and and also help the the, the scene grow grow, uh, grow because when you paint in a neighborhood that you don't belong or you are like super far you're gonna influence all the kids so I, that was also part of, of, of the thing to, to influence more people and make this bigger um, but when when I kind of moved into New York I I, I couldn't do graffiti anymore like I, I used to because I couldn't, I didn't feel like comfortable. And I did some, you know, I, I met, I, I met uh, some goals that I, that I had for it uh, from since I started, you know, some dreams, I made some dreams come true, but, uh, but I never took it like a, like, like a real game, you know, like when you, you are active in the graffiti, in the graffiti world. So I started move, moving into like the studio and developing my painting inside and then bring it outside, but also like many, like this, it's a, it's a constant uh, search for me. It was, now it's different, but uh, those pre first 10 years in New York, I was, or like uh, eight years, I was trying to find what to do, how to do it. Uh, I was influenced by, by big artists too, like uh, contemporary artists. Um, I, from also like history, uh, by working as assistant as an assistant for other people, uh, so uh, that's how like I'm, I I start kind of discovering what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do. But it took it took forever. Like, for, I feel like. Well, I mean, I think that you know, as an outsider watching you uh, learn. By the, the way, city. that's the painting I did. Sorry. By the way, yeah. that's the painting I did with CERN. And in, uh, in the Lower East Side in 2006, Cern is uh, one of my best friends here. He kind of um, welcomed me and and, and 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 gave me a lot of uh, opportunities to paint and to meet people and why am I crew? Um, so yeah, uh, he's important. And, and yeah, you guys did a lot of work together. Yeah, we did. We did. And so, mm -hmm. so this one I remember well, and I remember a lot of your collaboration. It was it was great to see you guys linking up because the YMI crew was also into creating murals and experimenting yeah. a lot with style 
and with mm-hmm. illustration, with all kinds of, of things. And so you fit really right in with that crew, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I felt like a, like a, like another family in a way. Um, even though like the, it didn't last so long because everyone was in a different stage, I think, in their, li- in their life. Uh, but we did stuff and, 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 and that led to other stuff. So, so always be grateful for that, man. Yeah, well, you know, you know, all these creative people coming together, growing, and it wasn't like you were teenagers anymore. You're you're adults, yeah. and everybody was pursuing different things, whether it's a, uh, art careers or other careers. And so, you know, I, I remember it very well. And and here here you see yourself inside. Yeah, inside that's inside to create. That's the first kind of big uh, exhibition I was invited here in in New York at the Rotunda Gallery. I was invited because I was kind of the street artist or, or the yeah the the non-conventional or unconventional artist probably because it was like contemporary art in 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 this gallery like Chilean uh, contemporary artists uh, and I created this piece that is uh, for me I put, I, I made it as a, more like an installation piece where I I I I painted the characters. I painted the whole mural that everything that is brown and yellow kind of it was uh let's say we i did it, the the words didn't uh they weren't there before i did the whole mural and then i put this uh, text on top of the of the of the mural to kind of work the idea of censorship and 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 the phrase also um says something about like the fear that kind of the system has for the insurrected people which is ha- what's happening now in a way like uh, how 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 they react towards the people that want to bring a uh, change or they get or the people that got organized and got united and how these uh powers kind of come to to stomp <laughs> on you so that's kind of was the main the main idea and the, and the, also the the letters are a it's a typical Chilean uh, sign lettering that is it was it was seen on on the buses on the on the buses in Chile so I use that and and the characters are a lot of like black people because I don't know I felt like I was in Brooklyn and I was and also like Latin people but mostly like you know like brown and black and black people getting yeah. united and then this other thing this white thing comes it's right. it's a it's it's a it's a wonderful piece uh about resistance yeah and, well and, i don't know if it's wonderful but yeah i was happy with it you know i never did it again but you know. no i think i think it's cool and i think like you know it, it stands the test of time it's good now it's good then yeah. right it's it means something yeah and I would so you mentioned it. yeah I, I i have the picture without the text and i think the mural also is, is very good i think i would love to see it in a maybe use it for for something yeah it was also influenced by those green and and emery douglas from the black panthers that that kind of imagery that's i was i was in this place that i was trying to find my own my own way so i was influenced by by many things well you know we we enter into this the next few minutes we have 15 minutes left again i want to let everybody know we are speaking to sekis uh, Nelson Rivas, a writer, a fine artist, a contemporary artist from Chile, living and working in New York City. Uh, we are talking about his career from the streets to murals to his studio work. And now we're getting into more of the studio work. Yeah, and, uh, conceptual in a way. Um, yeah, uh, like the work that I'm doing is uh, is an evolution of what I started doing in, in like 2008 when I kind of started renting or like sharing my first studio. So I could, after I, I, I had these uh, experiences with, with a few artists being an assistant, I kind of wanted to have my own place and, and start kind of doing it and, and taking it ser- more seriously. Uh, so I, I shared space and I start painting trying to come up with uh, with ideas and and the and the idea of um, immigration kind of uh, 
uh, showed up f for me. I met many people. I'm an immigrant, so I can relate to any other immigrant in, in, in every, everywhere in the world, in the way. So uh, this picture kind of depicts uh, a, a people, that, a person who's kind of crossing the, front, the, the border, like trying to come to another place who's He's trying to, you know, get, uh, make a better living. So, this is a series of painting I did that uh, there are only in my my family house. So that's how kind of the fence started. But also like uh, I use the fence as uh, also as another uh, like an element in my paintings before, like as a background, as a part of the layering, and until it started uh, gaining more more importance and and also. I saw like a potential uh, uh, in, uh, in it or on it um, to to kind of explore and, and develop, you know, uh, things that I could say uh, now, maybe try to work the same ideas or same messages, but uh, try to, to, to do it in another in another way. So it's more like a uh, open for for interpretation and it's wider for 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 the audiences so um yeah just try to take it to another another level in a way you know? yeah the, and, the, these works when you were painting these fences i remember uh visiting your studio in 2012 yeah and and seeing these pieces and i i absolutely fell in love with them you know mm -hmm. just just the, the idea of the fences and what the fences mean to mm -hmm. all of us, you know, yeah, as, as, the graffiti as writer. barriers, exactly. Yeah. And also, yes, to everybody in the world, and as a human has his own like battle, and and they've been exposed exposure to 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 many different things, like division wise, and 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 yeah. So it could be an imposed in an imposed uh, division uh, or a self imposed. Could be anything that kind of blocks uh, block us I, I, and we I try agree. to 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 overcome it to overcome it and and, and also trespass it sometimes and sometimes we can even we can even get over it so we we could we, we learn how to deal with it and and live with it you know like um so yeah that's uh, how it started yeah 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 and and you know i think also you know with with what you mentioned before about immigration from a personal experience but also your studio was located in sunset park brooklyn which is uh very much an immigrant neighborhood yeah man and and so you were you were surrounded with this theme whether you you know you couldn't get away from it no it no and I, I didn't want to because a film home if i if when i'm like with other like latin americans you know we like say hola and whatever, and, and, and we kind of share same things, not same thing, but we have things in common. And 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 because they're mostly are immigrants, and each one has his own story, so so we kind of relate. The, this Park piece is here, is beautiful. It's a beautiful neighborhood. Yes, it really is. Uh, you know, this piece here. You know, when I saw this piece, I, I I also thought you were also making a change again. You you know, this was a different direction. I had seen the fences, I had seen the people, and then here you had the fences with the people, but then you added this element of plant life yeah, into it, and then you know nature, and and then also tags. And I thought it was just a a a, a great piece mm -hmm. that's that's you know speaking to many different things yeah. uh and i felt like this was sort of the beginning of you really exploring uh, nature and and sort of changing is, is that correct yeah in a way that's like the nature start like uh, appearing slowly and after i kind of uh, developed these other uh, compositions with just fences and 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 and, and different type of uh chain and, and, and mixing different textures um i don't know i try to to do it over people um to kind of express that that oppression and 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 struggle um that we will we all kind of have and so yeah and, some, and sometimes they make it out into the street the fences and yeah that that's what's the thing also like when i would start like 
developing this. I kind of saw like this could work on the street and also could work on the canvas. So that was very important, like that kind of uh, discover, discoverment for me. Like when I saw that potential that I could do a piece that is, uh, that is, uh, it makes sense here in, in, in like an indoor space and also can make sense outside too. And, and both are powerful but different the con because of the, the context in a way, but kind of both like a, a filled out a space that with, with, with art and, and, and a message, you know? Sure, sure you could expand it. And, and in, in the case with this truck, the fence is broken. Yeah, there's a little hole that is... There's a hole in the fence. There's a hope. There's, there's, some, some, a, a, there's little, some hope. a little bit of hope. A little bit. And, and, and you know, at the same time, I, I, I remember you were uh, creating murals that were, I don't know, if, you know, around Brooklyn, and, and I saw them in, in Harlem as well. Um, and they also felt like there was some hope in those murals. You know, this is an example of one, and here you see a, a, a yeah. writer. A that was kinda, of that's 2011. That's right before I kind of decide to just or like start working on the fences uh, theme. Just based, but here there's some fences included in the background, so that's how kind of evolved in a way. But this uh, is also like a continuation of a, mu a mural I did in Chile, that is uh, about education and uh, the students. So this kind of second part that I, I did outside this uh, school in, in Brooklyn. So it was right in the same time. That's why can I uh, not repeat the idea, but it's very similar in a way. But, yes. So, but it's always like uh, the, the message has is, is been important in my work. So uh, even if it's, it's just uh, could be taken as an abstract work, but it has like that meaning or that history <clears throat> or like Development. magic that's happening here it's <laughs> it's the, the the world is not real here yes yeah, thank you thank you thank you and so <laughs> and and you know sometimes you paint these uh these these tough guys yeah. and i think this one was in miami and you see the buildings the face the this character and then it, it was a bit of like again this is sort of your influx things are changing for you yeah yeah well i i think um i got influenced by the history too in miami so this was like a kind of like a gangster type of dude and my uh, for, from florida <laughs> when because i when I, I went to miami for the uh our order in 2010 and and marta Mar and marta cooper hooked me up with uh with the guys who were starting at the the whole thing over there the Wynwood yeah. thing, um, and they got me this wall. So I, I painted that wall for the for the art bus in 2010, and and I just wanted to do some site specific uh, idea I had. You um, still have some. You still have a wall. No, and that wall still exists, bro. It's yeah, hidden. it's hidden. It's in That's in good. downtown area in Miami, near on uh, 15th Street, I think. It's in, like a parking lot. I saw the other like. Two years ago, when I went to the Basel, I I remember the, that year, and I remember, and I know that you still have another hidden wall in in Miami in Wynwood. It's still there. It's a store, like a uh -huh, like a, yeah, 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 like a small door. Yeah, yeah, it's also hidden. So here, here we see now you are in nature with fences, and I think I believe this is in London. Is that correct? Uh, this is London. Yeah, this is a. Uh, that's when I start like a. Uh, using the nature um, or like balance the piece in a way like with nature. So it's not that stiff or not like hard. And it has like this uh, natural element that kind of uh, balance the, 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 the piece, the composition, but and also like the meanings that is not that negative sometimes. It could be like, a, it could be life, you know, life sometimes, you know, you, you have to learn how to deal with the stuff, you know, with, with problems all the time, so that's kind of the, the 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 nature started as a symbolic element, more more than a botanic uh, research. It's more like a, started more like a bringing this element to 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 
how you say it, like contraponer it's like to put like uh, yeah it's like balance in a way the, the weight yes so it's more like this life life and element that is is there you know and and it started slowly too now it took over uh, because the I don't know the the the, the, the times who knows but um, pe pe people need it People yeah. Need it. Yeah. Also. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And so you know, Nelson, we we only have a few minutes left. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, Instagram cuts us off in an hour, but these new these are your newest works here. These are <laughs> quite giant pieces here, and yeah. this is and this is the a roof. fence, a yeah. rooftop, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Incredible. It's a rooftop in the in the flea market in Santiago. Uh, Created by the, the, this flea market is called Persa Victor Manuel. Uh, they started a big change and, and they started adding art and different murals from different artists there. So um, this was me. I was invited to paint on a roof and I created this. Well, I make this relation within my work and the history of the place because this place was it's super old, it's like 100 years old. And by when they when it was existing or was this was like a meat factory type of thing, and that. now it's used as a flea market. So in those years, it was the the border of of, of Santiago, the the south border. So that's why I, put, I call the uh, Borde Sur, which is the name of the piece. So I could you know make this uh, relationship between my work, which is a lot of borders and and this other uh, factor. From, from and the, the history of the place. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then Nelson, this this last piece here. Yeah, that's the last piece I did. Is, a, is with the it. last piece that you just completed. Yes, last week. This is in Chile. Uh, this is a big, big collaboration with the um, Lira Art, uh, Arte Público, which is an, um, an organization that uh, is working with uh, 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 the artists and creating big, uh, big projects, and and they they came to me asking me if I was interested to to create something for the for this part of Santiago, which is a is a hill that is uh, the, the biggest park in Santiago, and 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 now of course it was uh, I, I was totally down to do it. Nelson, I, yeah, I, I, it's a wonderful piece. We we have thirty seconds remaining. I I want to thank you, and I want to yeah, thank man. everybody who who tuned in to uh, to listen to your story and to hear about your wonderful history. Uh, we thank you very much for sharing your work and sharing your time with us t tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you, we, uh, man. As I said, I was I was waiting for the for the invitation. <laughs> I'm I'm glad that you were down. I'm glad to do it. I'm glad that so many people tuned in tonight. Uh, please tune in tomorrow. Tomorrow we have Ben. Uh,